It is a breezy autumn morning. Kathleen sleeps in her bed peacefully until her boyfriend, Frank, a writer at the New York Observer, wakes her up feeling excited. The source of his excitement is the news of Solitaire, being removed from the computers of the entire workforce of Virginia, because they had not done any work in six weeks. He is a believer that technology has ruined people's productivity. He soon leaves for work. Kathleen has been waiting for him to leave so that she can check her email. Her screen name is Shopgirl, and she gets mail from NY152, whom she met in an over-30s chat room. They started talking about common interests, and they instantly clicked. She knows nothing about this mystery writer except that he has a dog named Brinkley. NY152 is Joe Fox, whose family runs the Fox Books Mega Stores chain. He waits for his girlfriend, Patricia, to leave so he can check his mail. They both enjoy each other's conversation. Even if they do not know each other in person, and many times cross each other's paths walking in the town, they share a bond. A bond to light up their day. Joe goes to his new bookstore that is being constructed, while Kathleen goes to her independent bookstore called The Shop Around the Corner, which she inherited from her mother, Cecilia. Kathleen meets her employee Christina, waiting outside the bookstore and comments on how beautiful the day is. Christina cannot quite relate as she sees two drivers arguing in the middle of the street. Kathleen is happy inside, making her overlook all the downsides of what is happening around her. Christina gets suspicious of Kathleen's gleeful mood, and asks what is happening. Kathleen tells her how they met online and they know nothing about each other. But she keeps reminding herself that it is nothing, and she'll stop soon as it is getting confusing for her. Soon her other store assistants, George and Bertie, arrive. Joe goes to his office to meet his dad and granddad. His granddad tells him his father is getting married again, this time to a woman named Jillian, with whom he has a four-year-old son, Matthew. Joe tells them that they bought one more independent bookstore. Now he left with one more bookstore which sells children's books. It is Kathleen's store. Kathleen and Joe share their daily accounts of things happening around them, from a butterfly in the subway to flower dust that never settles. They talk about books, and the other makes an effort to participate in the same activity, so they can feel the same, no matter how mundane the task may be. They also share their experience with Starbucks, which is a place for people with no decision-making ability to make six decisions, just to buy a cup of coffee. Amidst all this, Kathleen looks at the new Fox book chain built across her humble bookstore. She assures her assistants there is nothing to worry about because the Fox cannot match up with the services they provide in their store. Frank gets a typewriter and loves every bit of it, calling its whirring sound a sweet lullaby, while Kathleen prefers her computer. She shares with Frank that she is confused. She hasn't figured out what she wants to do in life, but Frank shushes her and says she is doing a noble thing. She is a lone read. Kathleen doesn't quite understand but doesn't bother to question Frank. Instead, she pens down her dilemma and sends it into the void of the internet. Joe has planned a fun outing with his step-sibling Matthew and Aunt Annabelle, who is just a few years older than four-year-old Matthew. Jillian comes to drop off the kids and doesn't shy away from flirting with Joe. They play games and get their faces painted. While returning, they see the storybook lady cut out outside Kathleen's store, and decide to go in to hear a story. Kathleen is reading, and all the kids enjoy the funny story, and burst into giggles every now and then. Joe enjoys himself, too oblivious of the fact that he is in the same room with his anonymous internet pen pal. Kathleen is amazed to find Annabelle as Joe's aunt and Matthew, his brother. Joe asks who Kathleen is, and she replies she is the store's owner. Joe doesn't disclose his full name, keeping his identity as a multi-chain bookstore owner a secret. Kathleen shares her vision of her bookstore, which she learned from her mother. They read a book to the child, and it becomes a part of their identity. She soon realizes she got carried away and stops. She then bashes the Fox books, but Joe doesn't say anything. He pays for the books they bought, an amount he finds outrageous, considering the price which they sell at Fox, and exits abruptly. On the day of the opening of Fox Books, there is a long queue outside as they are offering a 35% discount. It is a grand opening, there are cakes, coffee, accessories one can buy, and a lot of space to sit and read. Kathleen and her assistants are worried they might have to fold. They had fewer sales that week because of Fox Books. Miranda, a writer whose book is to be launched soon, visits Kathleen's store. She is worried there might not be enough crowd for her book launch. She suggests they can ask the man from the Observer to write something about the store as publicity. Kathleen shares it with Frank and is baffled, because she doesn't understand why Miranda would think her store is in trouble. They go to a publishing party, where Kathleen meets Joe and learns his true identity. She accuses him of being a spy, but Joe counters her by stating all the inefficiencies in her store. However, Frank and Patricia hit it off quite well, and practically had to be dragged away to be separated. That night both Joe and Kathleen couldn't sleep, so they share their troubles with each other. Joe's woe is that he always ends up being mean, while Kathleen gets tongue-tied when she should have said something to defend herself. After a few days of chatting, NY152 asks Shopgirl if they should meet. Kathleen and Joe try to avoid each other at all costs possible, hiding behind newspapers or flowers. Miranda decides to launch and have her book signing event at Fox Books. Shopgirl reaches out to NY152 for help because her business is in trouble. 
Without any specifics, NY152 advises her to go to the war and fight for herself, quoting Godfather. Kathleen turns to Frank and asks if he would write something about the store, and he agrees. The result of it being that more like-minded customers come to their store, who think the giants are crushing the underdogs. The protests start, and people demand to close the Fox bookstore. Finding no way out, Shopgirl asks NY152 to meet her. Joe finds out that Shopgirl is none other than Kathleen. Joe doesn't meet her as NY152 but goes into the cafe as himself. Kathleen tries to get rid of him, but he persists and sits with her. Kathleen has a breakthrough when she tells him exactly what she is thinking, which has never happened before. Joe tries to get Kathleen to say what she thinks of NY152, and she praises him. But the night soon ends when Kathleen tells Joe how insensitive he can be. Joe leaves, and soon after, Kathleen does too. While going back home, she dumps the rose in the garbage. When Christina and George find out that Kathleen got stood up, they suspect NY152 to be the rooftop killer, because he was arrested just a few two blocks from the cafe. She dismisses it and writes a mail to NY152 asking why he didn't show up. She also mentions that she felt bad after being cruel to Joe. She then thanked him because talking to NY152 meant a lot to her. Joe reads it all and feels bad. He knows he can't stand Kathleen in reality, but reading her heartfelt messages makes him realize she has a lot more to her, which he has developed an interest in knowing. After trying to avoid his mail for some hours, he cannot bring himself to stay away and writes her back an earnest apology. He also adds that if she said those mean things, they might have been a result of provocation, or the man deserved it. Kathleen forgives her internet pen pal and is happy he wrote back. She also makes a heartrending decision to close her mother's store. Her Aunt Bertie encourages her brave decision because now Kathleen can figure out what she wants to do in her life. Soon Kathleen and Frank confess they don't love each other anymore and have a lovely dinner before parting ways. The closing day is an emotional ride for all loyal customers. They buy many books to commemorate their time in that lovely bookstore. After the closing, Kathleen visits the children's section in the Fox bookstore. She can hardly control her tears when a customer asks for a book, and the staff has no knowledge about the book. Joe witnesses this. While returning, Joe and Patricia get stuck in the elevator with the doorman and another tenant. After they all share what they will do once they get out of the elevator, Patricia says she will get her eyes lasered. And when it is Joe's turn, Patricia couldn't care less, and this gets Joe thinking how devoid of love their relationship has become. After they came out of the elevator, Joe broke up with Patricia and moved out with Brinkley. He tells this to Shopgirl, and she tells him how heartbroken she is after her store is closed. It is as if she has lost a part of herself, and no one can ever make it right. After his dad ends it with Jillian, Joe realizes who he wants in his life. The next day he goes to meet Kathleen with a bouquet since she is sick. George is now working in the Fox store. Joe makes tea for her and reveals he wants to be her friend. They share a moment, and along with their friendship, a feeling blossoms. Kathleen asks NY152 to meet, and he agrees, but first, he needs to get over with a project that needs some tweaking. Joe has some fun instilling some doubts into Kathleen's mind about her internet friend, and Kathleen cannot help but ask for an explanation from NY152. Joe and Kathleen meet frequently, and Kathleen tells him that it was her mystery friend, who got her into writing children's books, which she couldn't have imagined doing while running a bookstore. Joe is curious to know whom Kathleen likes more, Joe or NY152, so he invites Kathleen to lunch both as himself and NY152. Kathleen meets Joe and tells him she is finally going to meet Mr. 152. Joe confesses his feelings to Kathleen, and wishes only if things were different between them. Business-wise, they would have been a nice couple. Kathleen agrees, but she has made her choice and leaves to meet NY152. And when she finally goes to meet NY152, she's delighted to find it was Joe all along. She can't control her happy tears as Joe wipes them with his handkerchief. She tells him that she wanted it to be him so badly, and now it has finally come true. 